Hey, it's Margie with the Asking Spot, and I have got another curb find to work with. And I know what you're thinking. You are a trash magnet. How do I keep finding them? Well, as it turns out, I live in an area of Florida that other Floridians affectionately refer to as Florida's weird. God's waiting room. Yeah, there are a lot nice of retirement community. senior folk that come down here and they bring all their stuff with them and then their kids don't want to drag it all back up north. So, a lot of it gets thrown to the curb, which is really sad because it's kind of cool stuff like these baskets. I got this one and this one. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, now um, this one I actually really love this part of it, so I'm pretty much just gonna clean it. I'm tempted to do an experiment with it. Do it, do it, do it. And I may try it, but we'll see. But I just don't like this part. And I'm like, that can simply be removed. So might be the only thing I do to that is just take that off and clean it up. Not sure, but this one, um, it's weird. It's in my colors. I actually really love this. Like it was made for But you. it's got some wear and tear. Namely, um, on this corner right here. But I have raffia. Not, unfortunately, big, wide bands of it. But I've got some raffia soaking in some water. Gonna let it sit there for 30 minutes. I actually have gone ahead and added a little bit of acrylic paint. I'm hoping it will dye it so it will match this. It doesn't work. It doesn't! But I think it's kind of unlikely. But as long as it's gotta sit in 30 minutes for water, May as well let it be dirty water. <laughs> Here's how everything else went. Let's get to cleaning these first. When they make baskets, they soak everything in water. So providing it's not too old or fragile, you can get it all wet again. I'm just using regular dishwashing soap on these guys. The important key is to rinse them thoroughly and get them drying quickly. As in drying in the sun. It's perfect for them. So 30 minutes have gone by, and uh, yeah, it's still the same old color, but it's perfect for fixing that. Well, now that everything is really pliable because it's gotten super wet and this raffia has been soaked, I am expanding it and making it its widest form, and then I'm going to put it through this at the tricky tool I'm using there. That's just a jeweler's screwdriver. You could pretty much use any thin screwdriver you have. You don't want to necessarily use something that would poke through the raffia. But if you have like a big embroidery needle, that would be great. Um, then uh, basically I'm making sure that I wrap it around and I'm capturing any of the other loose raffia from the basket so I can stop it from uncoiling. Once I have it tightly bound and just knotted off, leaving it in the sun to dry again is key because that sun will tighten up the straps more and make it for a better hold. day two with this. I was really surprised how long it took to dry. Normally these things dry in the sun in a couple hours, but um, this one is really a flexible piece, so it doesn't have metal on the inside. It's just wrapped and wrapped around itself. So I think that's why it was so thick. It took a day and a half to dry. So I left it out in the sun during the day and brought it in at night and then brought it back out and it's now finally dry. When it comes to the big basket, I went ahead and just kind of left it as it was. I really liked its colors. Um, I think I could have tried spray painting it if I wanted to change its colors. But the biggest thing about the basket now is A, suturing up that corner helps support it, and then just plain cleaning it and letting it dry in the sun. That tightens up the fibers of baskets 
and it just made that basket now stronger and less you know floppy like it used to be so i'm really thrilled with the results of that and if you could please consider subscribing and just by checking that uh, thumbs up you can also help out the channel too and thank you so much and now let's move on to the smaller basket now this is the one that i kind of thought well i'm just going to get rid of this thing and just be done with it because i wasn't really a big fan of this I'll leave the basket as it is but then i looked at how simply this was made and i was like I can do that and I'm not a good sewer. So using some spare denim, I sewed a new insert for it, which was really easy. And um, I'm not really showing you a video of me sewing that because let's face it, sewing is just putting it through the machine. And when I did this, it was late at night. So the lighting wasn't great. So I couldn't film it anyway, but it's easier if I just explain it. If you wanted to do this to any square basket you have, the basic part of it is like this, and it's just one solid piece. From one side all the way to the other side, one solid piece. And then there are the two sides, and they have room for the handle. So as long as when you're cutting out your pattern, you're measuring your basket, you've got a quarter inch to half inch seam allowance all the way around, you should be fine. The other big thing to keep an eye out for though is when you're doing your two side panels and this is one i had to do multiple times because i didn't leave enough space you're measuring from the bottom to the bottom of the handle because you got to leave that open for the handle to get in there and then you still have your overlap that has to match up with what you have in the overlap on the sides the width also you have to check out the sides of your handles to see how far you need that and again a reminder on the seam allowance. So instead of having this as my insert, I now have used some old denim legs, cut them open, and that's the denim I'm using for this. I even made the ribbons on the side with it. It was super easy. And this seam matching up here, total accident. The only reason I did it that way was because I was like, I don't want to sew through that thick, heavy seam, but I need all the fabric I can get. So I just cut the legs open through the middle and that's how I was able to get the seam there. And um, the other thing, oh, the straps. I was getting way over complicated on that. I just used some more of the denim scraps. They're really, they're just, just a strap and I tied it, you know, sewed it on. And that's how we have this final piece. As far as what you did see me sewing, these are um, just scraps of old shirts of my husband that he no longer could wear and they were in a shape that you know they they weren't feasible to be donated so i was like wait a minute these would make great everyday napkins you know not formal having company over but as in let's not use so many paper towels go ahead and just wipe your face with this or wipe off some part of the counter with this then we could throw it in the wash rather than throwing it in the trash and creating more of a landfill so there you go thanks so much for watching the asking spot i hope i inspired you to look again at something before you toss it out you never know what you can come up with to change it around because uh, i liked how these turned out thanks so much for watching the asking spot just really lucky it is apparently where i am it i filmed it well, I didn't film it because I was sewing at night. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but I did it at night so the lighting was bad and, I don't know, sewing machine. It's kind of like an Etch-a-Sketch. It can only go a certain ways. It's not really very flexible. Oh, maybe it's like a castle in chess. Rook to